All right, so we're gonna try something different here with uh, the math video. I'm gonna <clears throat> use this website here provided by bcmath.ca. Thanks for those people. Um, and so with these notes are already typed up. It's, a, it's basically a, um, a slideshow. And um, you don't have to write out everything, but I'd, I'd, if I were you, I'd write out um, key things. And I'll, and I'll try to highlight what I think are important things to write down. Okay, so uh, highlighting the key words is what we're gonna do. Uh, today's lesson is, is kind of all over the place, but the main thing is looking at types of numbers. And there's two main types of numbers we're looking at. Um, out of all the numbers that you know, there's rational and there's irrational numbers. So any number you can think of fits in either this category or that category. And here's the key difference between a rational and an irrational number. Rational numbers are all numbers that can be written as a fraction. So that's important. So I think you should write that down. Oops, get used to this system here. So rational numbers can be written as a fraction. So if I highlight it, I suggest that you write it down. Rational versus irrational is the title. All rational numbers can be written as a fraction. Some other things about rational numbers. Um, sometimes you don't know if a number can be written as a fraction. And a couple of hints, like say you've got a decimal, and you're not sure if that decimal can be written as a fraction. Well, um, when you have a decimal, and RN means rational number, a decimal that can be written as a fraction if it ends, if it, if it has a, like it ends, at a, it terminates. You know some numbers go on forever, like they go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So things that terminate or have an ending, like 0 0.2, done. 0 0.175, done. 1.684, finished. Those are rational numbers because they end, they terminate, and they can, because, and because from the previous video you know, they can be turned into a fraction. So for example, um, you know, 0 0.8, can be written as four fifths. Um, 0 0.125 can be written as three eighths. These are all rational numbers. Um, so that's so three decimal places. We've got one decimal place. This number here can be written as a fraction because it is a fraction. And this decimal can be written as a fraction. It terminates. It doesn't keep going on forever. So remember the rule is how do you go from a decimal to a fraction? You count the number of spots it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six. The number of spots it takes to make it a whole number. And put that over um, a power of 10 with six zeros. The previous video told you that. Okay. Um, now, that's not the only type of number that can be rational. If they don't end, they can still be rational. So if they don't terminate, they have to have a pattern. So a number like this, for example, 0 0.36363636. It, yes, it goes on forever, but there is a pattern to it. There's a repeating of the three sixes. So because of that, it's rational. It's got a pattern to it. So again, for a rational number, it can be written as a fraction. So if it's a fraction, guaranteed it's rational. If it's a decimal and you're not sure, when you look at it, does it end? Does it terminate at a certain point? If it does, it can be written as a fraction, which means it's rational. And if it has a pattern, if it does go on forever, but it has a pattern, it can be written as a fraction, which means, yes, it's rational. So that's a rational pattern, these two repeating digits. Um, one over seven, if you punch into a calculator that has a lot of decimal places, you realize that these six numbers do repeat over and over and over again. And even this crazy number here, one over 17, and you'd have to have a really, like a huge calculator in terms of how many digits it can show, but this repeats all 16 digits. Um, just take my word for it. It is a rational number. So um, what they should have in this little thing is that the decimal first, and then so we can write as a fraction. The decimal first, you can write as a fraction. And this decimal can be written as a fraction. You'll never get something that ugly and big.
Okay, so um, the key things here again are that rational numbers can be written in decimal form that end or terminate, and if they don't terminate, they have some kind of pattern. So whatever I highlighted, you should jot down. Okay? Maybe a few of these examples as well. 0 0.8 can be written as a fraction. It's 4 fifths. Uh, 0 0.125, it terminates. It's a rational number. The repeating 0 0.363636, it's got a pattern. It can be written as a fraction. Okay. So it's rational. Um, now, the word irrational, the opposite of rational, is something that doesn't, well, the word irrational means it doesn't make sense. And in math, I guess it kind of is the same sort of deal. Um, an irrational number cannot be written as a fraction at all. You cannot write as a fraction, so that's important. Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction. What kind of numbers cannot be written as fractions? Well, ones that um, first off, if it's not a fraction, it might be irrational. Uh, two, if it's if it's a decimal and it ends, remember it's rational. Um, and if it has a pattern, it's rational. So what we're looking at for an irrational number is a number that uh, has a decimal that goes on forever, doesn't end, and there's no pattern. So when irrational numbers are in decimal form, they do not terminate and they do not have a pattern. So that's a key thing to write down no pattern and they go on forever. Can you think of a number that goes on forever and doesn't have a pattern? Well pi is one of them. Pi is 3.1415 and I don't know the rest. I'm sure some of you are disappointed that I didn't know the rest but it goes on and on forever and there's no pattern whatsoever. It's just a bunch of almost it seems like random numbers thrown together. So pi is an irrational number. The square root of 2, trust me, do it in your calculator, I'll do it here. The square root of 2, and a lot of square root numbers are irrational. Take the 2 and you square root it. This number goes on forever. And it's no pattern at w whatsoever. It looks like there kind of was one at the start. 4, 1, 4, but then it just gets all gobbly gooky. There's no pattern. Uh, square root of 3 doesn't have a pattern either. And, and you can take a calculator and start fooling around and seeing what you get. Okay. So irrational and rational. Uh, here's some common rational numbers, like I said. Have you written as a fraction? Numbers with only one decimal place are, are rational. Um, so again, like these numbers here, they are rational because they end. And they can be written as a uh, fraction from the last video you know. Here you have to move it one spot, that's one zero, that's two over ten. One spot, that's one zero, seven over ten. One spot, one zero, nine over ten. 4 over 10, you get the idea, which is 2 fifths, yes. And numbers with repeating digits, the last video didn't show you how to do this, but the trick with repeating digits, the way you can show them as a fraction, is instead of use, um, using a power of the base 10, use the number 9. This is pretty cool. So for example, here we have 0 0.2 going on forever. 2 is repeating. That one number, 2, is repeating. The way you write 0 0.2 repeating on forever as a fraction is put the number that's repeating, which is 2, over 9, 2 ninths. Here, 3 is repeating over and over and over again. They don't have to put the bar over all the 3s. They could just put 0 0.3 with the bar on top of just the first 3. So just one number is repeating over and over and over again. So you put the number that is repeating, 3, over 9. And here, 0 0.4 repeating forever, shown this way. One number is repeating, so you put the, that number, 4, over 9. Now here, how many numbers are repeating? Two numbers are. 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5. Two numbers are repeating. So the 15 is repeating, so you put 15 here. And since there's two numbers repeating, it'll be over two nines. 15 over 99. And again, if you had three numbers, let's say you had 0 0.542, 542, 542, 542. That's three numbers repeating. You put 542 over three nines. 542 over 999. 
cute little trick about the nines. Um, and of course, numbers that end in quarters, like 0.25s, obviously they are rational numbers as well. And there are some of them. Okay, so I, what I would uh, jot down from here are that, uh, is this part here, that numbers with repeating digits can be written over the nine, the nine rule. Uh, 0 0.2, one digit repeating, two nights. Let's just skip to this one here. 0 0.4, one number repeating, four nights. 0 0.1515, two numbers repeating, two nines. All right, next up. How do you show numbers like this on a number line? Okay, first off, what you want to do is realize I got the number here one point, oh, sorry, one and three eighths. Well, we should know that, so that's one something. So if we're gonna make a number line, no need to go from like zero to 50. Let's just go from like zero to two, or in this case, what they did here, they went from zero to three. Now to show where the, th so we know that this number is gonna be between one and the two, so around here somewhere. Three eighths, how do you show three eighths in a number line? Well, we want to, from the, between the one and the two, we want to chop it up into eight spots, or eight little sections. So whatever the denominator is, that's how many sections we're going to, we're going to chop the section up into. So check this out. Again, the big number in the left indicates where to start on the number line. So the one tells you where to start. There it is, the one. We're going to start there. And then the denominator tells you how many increments or slices we're going to cut between one and two. Dominator's eight, so we'll cut the distance from there to there into eight separate pieces. Check this out down here. Boom, 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 boom. Eight pieces. And the number on top tells you where on here, how many spots we're going to go into. So it should be one, and these are cut into eighths. So it should be one and one, two, three eighths should be right there. Let's see if we're right. So the numerator tells you which chunk to go up by. So it's gonna be one and right there, one and three eighths. So that's where one and three eighths would be in the number line. I'd fill the whole thing as well. Uh, but yeah, so what I would jot down is again, what I just uh, explained there. Um, to show one and three eighths, you draw a number line, split it up into whatever the denominator is, and then count to where the numerator is, and that's where the location is going to be. So if you could actually jot down that example there fully and that number to show how to do one and three eighths. Okay, uh, let's do another example here. What if you had five sevenths? How would you show that in a number line? Well, five sevenths, hopefully you know that that's less than one. So we're going to draw a number line between 0 and 1. Yeah, this value is between 0 and 1. So there we go, between 0 and 1. And they're being extra cautious and putting a little bit less and more just in case. But we know it's going to be in between here somewhere. So 5 sevenths, that means we should split up this into how many sections? Well, it's out of 7. So we should split it up into 7 sections. So we split it into sevenths. Well, where's 5 7 going to be? Well, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. 5 7 right there. And that's what the 5 7 will be, so you can put down 5 7 And so I'd put that down as something important to write down. 3 and 2 fifths, how would you show 3 and 2 fifths on a number line? Well, 3 and 2 fifths, that's 3 and a little bit, so that's between three and four. Again, no need to go from like negative 50 to positive 50, just write down what you need to. So draw a number line between, that has three and four. They are doing a little bit extra, you don't have to, between three and four. We will split three and four, between three and four up into fifths, the denominator. And split into five pieces. Now when you split into five pieces, you're not drawing five lines. That's one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, five pieces. And uh, the two fifths will be right here, right? Three, these are all fifths, one fifth, two fifth, right here, three and two fifths. So there's a little arrow, it doesn't really know what to do first, but it eventually finds, yes, that's our answer. 
3 and 2 fifths. So I jot that one down as well as an example to show. Down here, negative uh, 2 and 2 thirds. For this one, uh, negative 2 is between negative 2 and a bit, looking at negatives, is between negative 2 and negative 3. So it's going to be in here somewhere. Split it up into thirds. Like I said, split it up into three equal parts. One part, two part, three parts. And where would this go? So we've got the negative two, we split it into thirds. Negative, so that's negative two. This is negative two and one third. This will be negative two and two thirds. We're going negatives, it's kind of opposite what we're used to. And so the answer is right there. So that's your negative two and two thirds on our number line. I'd also jot that example down. Okay. Keep it going here. Uh, yeah, and since the value is negative, they are going from left to right. The numbers get bigger going uh, to the left. Okay, here's an interesting one. Here's a pair of rational numbers, or just numbers because they've been written as a fraction. And think, or what are some numbers that would be in between these two numbers? Now to do this, so you have 5 eighths and 14 sixteenths. It's hard to compare fractions that have different denominators. So what you should do first, just like saying like which one of these is bigger, 5 eighths or 14 sixteenths, to, to really compare fractions you need to make them the same denominators. And make them the larger denominator, it's the easiest thing to do. So 8 can become 16 by doing what? 8 can become 16 by timesing this by 2, times that by 2, so that gives us 10 over 16. So now we can sort of see 10 sixteenths, 14 sixteenths. Think of two numbers that are in between 10 sixteenths and 14 sixteenths. Um, and actually they're asking you which of these five numbers are in between 10 sixteenths and 4 sixteenths. Again, it's hard to tell because these, are, not all of them, have a denominator of 16. I can see that. That obviously is not going to be in between these two. That is that, so it's right on the line. And 11 sixteenths, I know for sure, is between these two. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But what about these two? We have to change them into sixteenths, make them the same common denominator. How to make eight into sixteen? Times by two. It times by two. And so that gives you fourteen over sixteen. So that is the same as that number. What about two fourths? How do you make that sixteen? Well you times that by four, times that by four, and you get eight over whoops, eight over sixteen and that is less than that number. Okay, so anyway, I'll show you how the, the computer thing will show you how uh, that all looks nicely. So there's your number line. First off, we know that 5 eighths and 14 sixteenths are less than one, so zero and one would be there. And we want to split it up into sixteenths. So there's the zero and there's one. We split it up into sixteenths. We're actually missing a line here. I'll draw it in for them. See, even these guys don't make a few mistakes once in a while. They're missing a line there. So we draw this out uh, going up by sixteenths. They didn't do it, but you should convert this into sixteenths so it's easier to see where it is. So ten sixteenths would be right here in the number line. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 out of 16, right there. And then there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 sixteenths there. Okay, from the little thing I just showed you already, 14 sixteenths is going to be right there. So that's not in between. 9 sixteenths is going to be right here. Uh, this one, which was 8 sixteenths, is going to be here. 8, 9, 10. 10 sixteenths is the same as that. 11 sixteenths is the golden answer. It's the only one between these two. 11 sixteenths would be right there. 
And if you don't like how I said it, here's the computer doing it for you. So 7 eighths, which remember is uh, four, the same as 14 sixteenths, goes there. 9 sixteenths goes right there. Because we'll do the 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 right there. Uh, this one, which I already told you, 2 fourths is 8 sixteenths, goes there. 10 sixteenths is going to be right here. There it goes. And 11 sixteenths is our golden answer. It is a number in between those two. Okay, for this one, uh, same sort of deal. Uh, one and eight ninths and two and one third. What you need to do is figure out um, what numbers we're going to be in between here. Um, so you have one ish and two ish. I suggest we draw a number line between one and three. There's a number line between one, two, and then the three is right here. Now they split it up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ninths. Because what they saw is there's the denominator nine. This we can make into nine. How do you do that? You just times this by three, times this by three, and then this becomes two and three ninths. So where would one and eight ninths be on here? One and one ninth, two ninth, three ninth, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninth, eight ninths. One and eight ninths. This is two and three ninths. Two and one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, two and three ninths. Which one of these fractions here are going to be in between those two? Here and here. The ones that are already over nine, or uh, under nine, you can figure out, but the ones that aren't, you need to convert. So this one here, uh, this is an improper fraction. I would turn it into a mixed number to make it easier. Seven goes into three twice. Twice, that's a two. Oh god. With the one left over, so that's two and one third. This is seven ninths. Uh, and, then, um, and 19 over 9 is 9 and goes into there twice with one left over. So that's two and one ninth. Um, so these two need to be converted into ninths. So how do we make this into a 9? We times this by 3, do the same to the top. This becomes 2 and 3 ninths. And this over here, times that by 3, times that by 3, becomes just 3 ninths. And we would do our number line. 2 and 1 third is going to go... Oh, well, sorry. 2 and 3 ninths is what this becomes. 2 and 3 ninths will go, well, that's the same as that, so that's not in between. 7 ninths, well, that's not even 1, that's like back here somewhere. 3 ninths, also that's back here somewhere. Um, 17 over 19, that's actually difficult to figure out on here, but uh, it's less than 1, we know for sure, so that's not even in the neighborhood. Um, and 2 and 1 ninth, well, there's two. Two and one ninth is right there. So that, or that, either way, is going to go right here. That is our answer. Let's watch the computer do its thing. So that is there. That goes there. That is less. And you see that, yeah, that is the only answer that is between those two. 19 over 9, which is the same as 2 and 1 ninth. You just go testing questions. Sorry this video took so long. Um, but yeah. So we'll do that, and that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.